If you could go back in a time machine to yeah. any point in your music career, where would you go back in time to and why, asks Jen Howard, from Berry, who's watching online. Okay, where would I go back to in my career? Yeah. Um, I'd go to the opening night of Les Mis. Wow. Oh. In 85. It was, it was amazing. We'd had, we'd had this, this incredible rehearsal period. Uh, we're at the RSC. I had, I had two ambitions when I left drama school. Well, my gran had the ambition. She wanted me to be in Coronation Street. <laughs> Mike, if you ever get it to Coronation Street, I don't care. You will be absent. Oh, my God, I wouldn't be able to cope. <laughs> And I did. <laughs> when I was doing Pirates, I did two episodes of Corrie. She didn't see it, um, sadly. Uh, but the other one, my dad, because we, as I was saying before, the whole thing with the RSC, and he said, you know, if you, can you imagine if you ever joined the Royal Shakespeare Company in something? And here, there I was, the RSC, doing Les Mis. We had this extraordinary rehearsal period. We didn't know what we had. And that opening night... I've never known a company of actors like it. It was, the, I mean, talk about a, an ensemble. That was what it was, you know, from Colm Wilkinson playing the lead right down to, you know, the, the, the little boy playing Gavroche, a proper, proper... Uh, uh, and so, that night, that show, something extraordinary and magical happened. And I think all of us were so knackered that we weren't able to take it in quite as well as we should have. Because um, it had been a torturous period, a lot of cuts, a lot of rewrites, a lot of changing. We presented it, and we finished this. The, the reaction in the in the hall was, was in the uh, Barbican Theatre, extraordinary. And we went home and woke up to the worst reviews you've <laughs> ever seen. I mean, they were shockers. So we thought, oh well, great. Eleven weeks at the RSC, and then it'll be closed, and we're off. And it's why it's the people's musical, because the audience, the word of mouth, <coughs> meant that people were uh, phoning in and completely jammed all the box office lines, queues around the block, and from that day to the, you know, for years, you couldn't, you had to book so far in advance, people were queuing for day seats, and I'd love to go back and see that, knowing what the future is for Les Mis, knowing what, what we created. And it was lovely. In Australia, one of the reasons I went, well, the reason I went, was to do a, a show called Do You Hear the People Sing, which was um, showcasing the music of Claude Michel Schoenberg and Alan Boubliel, who wrote Les Mis and wrote Miss Saigon, Martin Guerre, and so on. And Claude and, and uh, Alain came out. Wow. And, you know, they're both in their 80s now, and we just hung out for this whole time. You know, and, the, and the stories and the reminiscences and... Oh, it was just, it was magical, magical time. And, I, it, it, and, and you don't, it's what I was saying to you before, you don't appreciate it until afterwards. Right. What an event that was. So I'd love to see that. Yeah. Wow. Great my favourite, my favourite, I've told this story <laughs> before, but my favourite ad lib ever, God bless him, uh, a, a guy called Ian Calvin, who was in the, in, uh, in the ensemble, um, he, he passed away during Les Mis. He was one of the first people to, to die from AIDS. You know, remember, if, mm. at that time, it was horrendous. And he was the lovely... He was... I don't mean this disparagingly. He was the quintessential aging chorus boy. You know, he was, he was in his probably mid-40s, had been in every show in the chorus. Mm. Campus Christmas, hilarious. Um, he was... When we were, we were doing the show and... Bits kept getting cut until, and he had quite a bit to do in the prologue and the opening thing before the, the, the show gets going. And <laughs> it kept getting cut and cut and cut until finally his only line, he was the guy who's crushed underneath the, um, uh, the wagon that Jean Valjean has to lift up. And he'd be lying there. His only line was, Monsieur le Maire, I have no words. <laughs> <laughs> And he used to do it like he did it like, Monsieur <laughs> Lombe, I have no words. <laughs> but, but then we were up the barricade at this one point, up the barricade early on, and we're -da 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 -bum 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 shooting away. And I'm stood next to him, and he turned to me and he went, This is all very well, but I'm more of a Hello Dolly person, really. <laughs> oh! 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 <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
that. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh, bloody loved him. Absolutely loved him.